There are 81 reasons to fall in love with Turkey and number 45 is Manisa. Manisa. Ah, where do I begin? A province that is full of hidden gemstones known for its Manisa Tarsan and the healing paste Misir Majunu. A place where I ate excellent food and I surely won't forget the narrow streets of Kula that scratched my car. Pardon, I scratched them. And I'm deeply sorry. What a lovely place to be. Manisa is located in the Asian region of Turkey and actually it's one of the places that surprised me the most. Wow! Oh my goodness! I had absolutely no expectations, but then this mysterious natural wonder just appeared in front of me. The Kula Ferry Chimneys in the eastern part of Manisa province. This looks like Cappadocia, just cooler! This is Kula Dokia. Just like Cappadocia, this is a protected natural area. It's right next to the highway between Ushak and Izmir. It just looks absolutely magical. They were formed with the help of the wind and also water. Fairy chimneys are usually found in areas where there is hard rock on the surface and soft minerals underground. The fairy chimneys in Kula are part of the geopark, but before I go there, I decided to see more of the small town of Kula itself. I just realized that my car got scratched. Help. Take the next left onto Ahmed Fair, Oh my god. Catch me Olsun. Catch me Olsun. Arabam Chapmash. Malasef. Kula might be a city that you've never heard of, but when I came here, I immediately hated it and fell in love with it at the same time. This small charming town of Kula is an old settlement that was able to remain undamaged. The Kula houses here have a Turkish Ottoman and Greek architectural structure from the 18th and 19th century. So even many of these houses are hundreds of years old. This one where I'm right now is over 300 years old. And of course Kula is a historical city and a protected area. Even though I'm in a hate-love relationship with Kula, Yes, there are more reasons to love it. Many of the old houses in Kula nowadays are turned into museums or restaurants, so it's really easy to go there and feel like being back in time. So there's basically just one hotel in Kula, it's called the Animon Hotel. It's also a very old house, over 200 years old. In my opinion, Kula is one of the most authentic old towns that you can find in Turkey and one of the best things to do is basically just to walk around in the town. Okay, I survived Kula so far. Now it's about time to get out of this town. I hope without another scratch. Let's do it. I'm back on 
the track. <laughs> Merhaba. Ben Geopark'a gitmek istiyorum. Ne o park? Geopark nerede? O, o merdiven mi? Yanardağ mı? Yani volkan. Volkan var. Ha volkan. Evet. Divlit köprü değil. Yok. Volkan. Kolanın çıkışında. Türkçen var mı senin? Az. Az. <gülüyor> Yalnız mısın? Evet. Niye? Çünkü ben geziyorum. Nereden geliyorsun? Ben İstanbul'da yaşıyorum. Hangi tarafı? Ağrı'ya veri? Bak ileride kolay çıkıyorsun. Hı. 7-8 kilometre. Askerlik şubesi var ha. karşıda. Tamam. Tamam. Teşekkürler. Sites are part of the geopark in Manisa, which is over 300 square kilometers big. Okay, so there is a warning sign. Climbing distance is 625 meters, 800 meters around the crater. It's prohibited to get out of the path, all right? Lighting fires, of course, there's no VC, there's no food or drinks, and of course, do not throw garbage along the way. Please do not harm the environment. Let's go. Why do I feel like this is more dangerous than I expect? There are always these emergency signs everywhere. Uh, should I be worried a little bit? But so far it's pretty nice. Nobody's around and the stairs are in really good condition. In Manisa you can not only find the first but also the only geopark. Oh my god, I didn't know that this kind of place exists in Turkey, but it does and not many people know about it. This geopark is over 300 square kilometers big and it has a huge geodiversity. Behind me for example is the Sandal Divlit lava flow. The black stones that you can see these are all volcanic rocks. Because the hot magna that got out of the crack of the crust from the earth surface it cooled down faster than expected and now there is this huge area where you can see like crusty lava. <laughs> this sort of lava also has a name it's called Aa lava which is origin from the Hawaiian language. Even the way here was not easy, like there was no sign, I really got lost, Google Maps didn't know where to go either. It was cried away, but wow, I think I have to move on now. Up here is the crater and there's a huge area with lava flow. It looks insane. Another important site within the area of the geopark is the antique city of Sardes. Sardis was an important ancient city and the capital of the Kingdom of Lydia. The Kingdom of Lydia existed from about 1200 BC to 546 BC. At its greatest extent during the 7th century BC, it covered all of western Anatolia including Ushak, Manisa and Izmir. Around 600 BCE, the Kingdom of Lydia became the dominant power in western Anatolia with Sardis as its capital. That's how important this ancient city was. Sardis was at a great location connecting Anatolia to the Asian coast. During its history, Sardis got taken over many times, but it always kept a high status among cities. Sardis was not only the center for traffic of goods, but also for ideas between Mesopotamia and the Greek Ionian settlements. So it was a great meeting point for the exchange of ideas, beliefs, knowledge and new insights. The antique city of Serdis might not be the biggest antique city in Turkey, but it's definitely one of the most impressive ones. 
I just made it to the Niobe Weeping Rock here in Manisa. Oh my god, it has such a sad story. I didn't expect that. There was a goddess, her name was Niobe. She had 14 children and there was another god, his name was Leto. He only had two children. So what Niobe did, oh my god, that was her biggest mistake of her life. She mocked Leto for only having two children. Apollo heard of the story and then there was a huge fight, a big crisis. At the end of the day, they killed all of Niobe's children except for one daughter. So she flew here with her daughter. She took her in her arms and she transformed into a crying rock. The Niobe weeping rock, a symbol of eternity eternal mourning. It's a bit sad, sad story. So the Niobe rock became the symbol of eternal mourning. Unfortunately, the waterfall that used to be inside the rock dried out, so it's not there anymore. Welcome to Francis Food Review. Hello, I'm now at a place, it's called Gül Jemal Kebab Chisse in Manisa and we're going to try out the Manisa Kebab, of course, very specialty in Manisa. Uh, it looks very interesting. There are two options. You can get the Manisa Kebab with yogurt or without yogurt and I love yogurt so I got with yogurt. I'm super hungry so let's try it. I wonder if we don't get a knife. But I think we are not eating it with a knife. <laughs> Nobody's eating it here with a knife. So yeah, let's just go for it. So we got the pide and on top of that there's yogurt and we have of course the kebab. Looks more like a sausage kind of form. Wow, it's so delicious. Mm. Oh it has kind of a special flavor. Actually, to be honest, I didn't know that there are so many different kind of kebab styles in Turkey. So in every province, I feel like they have a specialty of kebab. I, th I feel like this kebab, especially here, is one of my favorite kebabs. Afirosun. Of course, there's also a castle in Manisa, the Manisa Kale See, which is on top of a hill overlooking the city. There is not so much historical information about the Manisa Kale See. Unfortunately, the structure is not remained that well anymore. Manisa is a modern city with a population of over 1.5 million people. It is also known as the city of princes and was called Magnesia in ancient times. It has a great nature and the city itself is quite green. There is one amazing example that dedicated his life to make Manisa a green place. The Tarsan of Manisa. Manisa Tarsan, or how he called himself, Ahmed Bedevi, was born in 1899 during the time of the Ottoman Empire. He got the Independence Medal for fighting in the Turkish War of Independence. After that, he devoted his life to planting trees in Manisa as an example to all of Turkey and therefore he planted thousands of trees during his lifetime. He got the name Manisa Tarsan because he walked around the streets of Manisa in only shorts and shirtless no matter if summer or winter. Also, the movie Tarzan was screened in Manisa cinemas in 1934 and he identified his life with this movie. When he died in 1963, he turned into a legend. Many statues were built to remember him and every year on the 31st of May, the anniversary of his death, ceremonies are held in Manisa for his memory. That's it from Manisa. See you next time in the